What is up guys, my name is Jay and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you something I built to say thank you for the 100 subs I hit. And as you know I'm a tutorial guy so I'm going to show you what I built and then I'm going to show you how to build a simplified version of it. So there might be a bit of uh, cutting and skipping in this video but I'll try and keep that to a minimum. So yeah. I'll uh, show you what I built and then show you how to build it. How to build it even. So yeah guys, you've seen what it is, it's a 3D printer, it can use any blocks apart from obsidian, bedrock, and then things like chests and furnaces and stuff like that. So I'll show you how to build a smaller version of it quickly because I'm not going to have time to show you how to build the one I built. So I'll show you how to build that, I'll just skip somewhere where I can build it and I'll be right back. I'm back guys, as you can see I've dug out a small hole in the ground which is where I'm going to get things started from. So first of all you want some regular pistons and you don't want to mess up like I did. You want to put them in a row along this wall and then come to the opposite end and knock these out in the floor and put pistons in the floor like so. So now if there's blocks here, they'll be pushed across and then pushed up by these. The next thing you want to do is go up uh, however far you want to within 12 blocks because pistons will only push 12 blocks. And you then want to just put a row of pistons and I've done that wrong. The pistons need to go one behind where your vertical ones are. So as it gets pushed up from the vertical ones, it can get pushed across by these. So I'll just finish this up. And then once it's come across here, you want something to push it back down towards this gap here. So you want to come directly up from here. And you want to take it to one above these ones. So like so. And then put pistons facing down all across there. Like so. And that is the basic structure done. I'll uh, you how it would work basically. If this is your starting point, the blocks would get pushed across to here. After this one's been pushed across, these would fire, push it up. After this one's fired, they'd push it across, and then after that one's fired, they'd push it back down, so it's getting an infinite loop. And I'll fill this up with blocks and show you how to wire it up. So first of all we are going to do the wiring. This is going to be the side that you want to fire first. So that's where we place the pistons facing us. And the best way to get a current to them is to just put redstone directly behind it. And that will make all of them fire. And I've got instant mine on. So that will make all them fire which is what you want. Then after that you want to get power to these behind here. So the best way to do that is to destroy the row of blocks behind and then you've got to keep in mind that you also want to get redstone up to here so I'll do something now and I'll explain it to you once I've done it. That. 
yeah, you want to just place redstone down here then. Behind this. And this block here that we built. I'm going to put some redstone on. And place a block on the side of that redstone. So it's going up in this staircase fashion. And you want to do that up until you're at the right height to connect to these ones. And then you want to come behind them and place all along the back of these with whatever block you're using so I'll just clear out these stairs so the main thing you want to remember when you're wiring these up is you want to have a two tick delay between these firing and then the next one's firing so that's one repeater set to two ticks so that's three ticks total so there's one tick that set to zero is two ticks and then that set to one is three ticks total so that means that these will fire three ticks after the ones before so now if I press this you can see these first ones fire and then the ones behind fire so then you want to place redstone going up here and this one you want to set to the full amount because you want this one firing two ticks later than this so you want it set to the full amount and then you want redstone going along the back here so now they all fire in succession like so that's what you want and then you just need to get power across to the final one so it's one higher so if you want to do this you can and you'll place redstone going up there and then a repeater set to two ticks as before And then you'll do this the same, just leading them behind and running the redstone on top. So now when you press it, this should all work in turn. That looks like it's working perfectly to me. So the next step is filling it all with blocks. You want to come to first pistons you placed and fill them up with the blocks you're going to be using right up until the edge of these pistons here and you then want to do one one above these pistons nothing actually on the pistons but some one above and then fill that and then same again stop one before the pistons so it's not actually covering the piston but it's one out from it and I'll explain why you need to do this in a second just get these blocks in first and then you need to do the same again for the last one leave one gap and then do it so the easiest way to do that is why I've been doing it where you place a block and then remove it and I need some more stone and then this one I will do a line of sandstone so you can see it actually working and then you want to come right to the bottom here so that will work now if I quickly pulse this lever you can see that that works but you don't want to have to mess around doing that quickly pulsing the lever so you're gonna need a clock which I mentioned in my last episode of redstone and basics so you should know how to build one of them but if you don't because you didn't watch it 
then I'll show you how to build one quickly. The most basic form of clock is to do this. So that's two ticks. And that is a basic clock. Yeah, and just want to connect that up to your redstone. And you have your working printer. And you can make patterns in it or whatever you want. And as you can see, that's working perfectly. The only reason before in the demo that I showed you it was a bit laggy is because I'm running fraps at the same time, so it doesn't quite cope with the chunk updates. But as you can see, this is working perfectly. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a rating as always, and let me know what you want to see next time in the comments. Uh, I'm going to be posting a lot more videos. I've been moving house, which is why I haven't posted any videos recently. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.